It's Brian, and I'm just gonna say it. Disney adults aren't all that bad. Okay, okay, yeah, I know there are some bad ones and some weird ones. Like, did you know there are people who will say hello to Walt every time they go to the park? Like, whoa. <laughs> to those people I say, please, find a new role model. I'm begging you. But on the whole, Disney adults, really, we're fine. We just like to go to Disneyland once, twice, maybe eight times a year to ride Space Mountain and eat a churro. And I say we because I am, regrettably, a Disney adult. I know. I know. You had this image of me and I just shattered it. But listen, my blood uncle is Tigger, so there was no way this wasn't an outcome for me. These Disney adults, these are the ones who draw a lot of the ridicule online, the hatred, and I think that that's unfair. Honestly, I know that because I have been to the center of the Disney universe and I have seen something much, much worse. And I'm not even talking about whatever they did to Goofy in the new Mickey Mouse animated series. I mean, look at this guy. Like, what is that? What did they do to it? Is he okay? I have so many questions and I don't know if they'll ever be answered. Like, he literally dies in this episode. Anyway. We're obviously talking about Disney influencers. You you know that. You saw the title and heard me say it earlier. So let's get into it. So this brand of Disney influencers, you can basically boil them down to career Disney parks goers. They'll go to the park, whether that's Disneyland or Disney World, and they'll make content. And some of that can be like vlog style content. Some of that is tips on how to minimize wait times in the park or use Genie Plus or whatever. Or they just live stream. There are people who will go on TikTok and live stream. That's it. Because what is more fun than waiting 90 minutes to not ride Rise of the Resistance? I can't think of much. And ever since the parks reopened following the pandemic, the sort of army of content creators has really, really grown in size. At least as far as I've seen. And it makes sense. I mean, going to Disneyland or Disney World as a job, that sounds pretty good. Good. And I don't think you need to be a Disney adult to agree with that. So then you would think that these people who get to do something so whimsical and joyful and fun would be kind and sympathetic and just good-natured people, right? Well, unfortunately, their sort of ascendance up the ladder of clout has really done the opposite in most cases, unfortunately. I know many of you are probably shocked to hear that. Take these Disney live streamers. If you're anything like me and you've maybe liked or just probably lingered on a Disney related video on your TikTok for you page, you've probably been subject to the same sentence that I have been given, which is seeing these live streams. People will just live stream their day in the park and for whatever reason, it seems like there's always a hundred of them every single day, different people at the parks doing their Disney thing. And I do most of my scrolling in bed before I go to sleep, so I tend to see people at the end of their day as the parks are closing and people are winding down for the night. We're gonna focus on Disneyland for a little bit here, but for most of the busy season, it closes at midnight. And if you're in line for a ride before that, you can go on that ride as long as you leave after. So by about 12.30 or so, give or take, you usually have most of the crowd filtered out of the park. But they do keep their shops open on Main Street until 1 a.m. I mean, it makes sense. This is their last chance to get that $35 out of you for a t-shirt, so of course they're gonna do it. And I have no problem with people using this time to shop. I, I mean, I would, if I was there, if it was my only time being there for I don't know how long, yeah, I'd probably use that time to shop because A, I don't have to carry a bag around with me all day, and B, it doesn't eat into the rest of my time in the park, so I can just go there afterwards, knowing that nothing else is open, and shop. What I do take issue with is the people who will use this time and just sort of linger. I feel like that causes some unnecessary stress or just extra work for the service staff, whether that's security or custodial, who are working Working, getting ready to do their night shift, clear the park, whatever they need to do. And you can call me a hero, I'm totally fine with that, but I just generally like to err on the side of let's not inconvenience service workers and custodial staff, let's just do whatever we can to make their job as easy as possible. That's just how I operate. I don't know about these guys. And I especially don't know about this guy. A few weeks ago I was in bed scrolling TikTok as I do and I came upon this live stream of a guy who was on Main Street ending his day at Disneyland. It was about 12.50ish I'll say. Except he wasn't really shopping, he was just kind of hanging out by the tree just kind of talking to his chat so me being the person that I am I just commented on his live stream and said go home because I see this all the time and I get so annoyed with it so I tell them all to leave because leave like it's time to go and I immediately get blocked which I saw coming obviously he said I was spreading negativity which is like yeah I, I guess but also you can go you just told us five minutes ago that you're gonna be here tomorrow night and you were probably here the night before so just 
go home. So the next night, after spending the whole day very sad that I got blocked by this guy, I, uh, I logged into my other account, knowing that he'd be there again, and sure enough, he's streaming. So I tune in, and this time I just observe. It's about 12.55 tonight, and now he's sitting on a bench near the train station, which is kind of near the exit of the park. So, like, he's almost there. Good job. Again, he's just kind of sitting there talking to his chat while filming the big tree in the middle of the town square. A few minutes roll by, he's really showing no indication to get up, and finally it strikes one o'clock, so I'm thinking, okay, he's gonna leave now. He doesn't. And he should know at this point, he's gotta go. He definitely knows. But he just keeps waiting. It isn't until 1.06, when a staff member comes up and sort of asks him to leave. And when he does, it's just, it's just annoying me so much. He looks up at him and he goes, oh, is it that time? Is it that time? Yep. Dude, right. you know it's that time. Come on. And so you're probably thinking like, yeah, it's six minutes. Like, okay, he's annoying and maybe a jerk, but like, why are you talking about this? He didn't leave. He walked over to the side and just stood there for another 10 minutes. 10 minutes he sat there talking about nothing, not shopping, not doing anything. He would occasionally look in the stores and be like, I think that's somebody I know. It wasn't. He didn't officially leave the park until 1.17 a.m. I know because I recorded it and you've been watching it this whole time. Anyway, I know it's like a very innocuous thing. Viewed from a distance, it's not the biggest thing in the world, but it's just like that ground layer of entitlement. You'll see that everywhere across the board with all of these influencers. And that's not okay with me. <laughs> I don't like that. And the worst part about it all, like the whole time he's standing around just chilling, he keeps talking about how the cast members are the one who make the magic happen and how Disneyland wouldn't feel the same without them and how he respects the work they do so much. Hey, I love cast members, y'all. You guys know I like highly respect and I highly love all cast members. Like even if they've given me a rough time, like I still try my best to respect them. Some harder than others, of course, but I try to give my utmost respect to the cast because I understand like what it takes to like make a place run like this. Like why do people still come even though it's so darn expensive? Every year the prices go up. Why do people still come? It's because cast members still make that magic that people crave. And it's just like, do you? Because it's kind of looking like you don't since you made them force you out twice. I don't know about that one. And need I remind you, he was there the night before and he did say he'll be there the night after. So that's three nights in a row that he's been here. He doesn't need to be there 15 minutes past close just to talk to his chat and earn a couple more bucks. He really doesn't. But this era of entitlement, it exists far beyond just this creator and a lot of the creators I've seen. They'll pay the $1,600 for their annual pass and then they'll just think it's like an all access pass where they can bend the rules because they're above everybody else. Even on rides like Pirates of the Caribbean, which is indoors and dark and sometimes quiet, there will be live streamers talking to their chat and just being overall disruptive and loud and annoying. And that's like a line that I really hate to see it cross when you're impacting potentially other people's stays at the park. You might be disrupting somebody's first time on this ride or a birthday party of young children. Like you are up to your antics or whatever what with your live stream. It's just, that's the line that I hate to see it cross. And I really have no respect for people who do that. And this isn't an isolated incidents. This isn't, you know, a couple or a handful of people who are doing this and causing a nuisance. If you go to the Disneyland subreddit, you will see people complaining about everybody doing this. This is a big problem. There are lots of people doing this. <laughs> Bigger than you can imagine amount of people trying to do this, which I, again, I get it. It's an enticing job, but you can't be horrible about it. There was actually one higher profile TikToker who was sort of the subject of the day on Disneyland subreddit after he got into a bit of an altercation, I guess is a word you could use for it, at the Matterhorn ride. He lost his hat on the ride or something and wanted to stop the ride, have them stop the ride so we could retrieve it. When it's just like, you should know not to wear your hat on the ride, but whatever. In the comments for this, there was a video somebody compiled of footage from his live streams where he was harassing guests, particularly women, bribing cast members, getting access to paid events without paying for them, you know, dining packages, stuff like that. And just generally using his platform and his clout to skip lines and just taking advantage of employees working at rides to try to get to the front of the line. And that's all stuff that's against the rules. And to just broadcast it freely really kind of says a lot about that person. And while Disneyland and Disney World both have yet to sort of instate rules about what you can and can't record, we know that the Disney company is aware of it and wants to make some level of change. Because back in September at Tokyo Disney, they instated a rule, a new rule, that basically says that any public transmission or recording of any kind that is impactful to other guests 
is prohibited. And obviously that's a huge, huge gray area. You can still very much operate within that to make your living doing this. But it's at least nice to know that there are avenues and precedents for guests who are impacted to complain and feel like they have a foot to stand on. And I like that. And I hope they bring that to the parks in the States because I just think it'll make a much more positive experience. I don't mind creators making their money. I really don't. And I don't think that all live streamers or content creators specifically at Disneyland are inherently bad or ill-natured. I just think that a lot of what they do is centered around things that are disruptive and they're encouraged to be disruptive by tips and donations that come through their live streams. And so I think that if you can do this without being those things, you're good to go. But if you can't, I really would implore you to find a new career because I just don't like you. Plain and simple. But we can't we can't just talk about TikTok live streamers this whole time. We gotta get onto YouTubers, right? Because I mean, there's a lot of YouTube drama too. And you can't talk about Disney YouTube drama without talking about Best Life and Beyond. Everyone's favorite. Best Life and Beyond. These are the people who are maybe most personally affronted by Disneyland being closed longer than Disney World after COVID. These are people who antagonize other park guests in their videos, but their newest legacy is as a duo who just publicly defied safety protocols to show up at one of the biggest days at Disneyland this year. So let's rewind and get a little background. Best Life and Beyond is a duo, content creation duo. They have about 100,000 subscribers. Their name are Katie and Spencer, and they live in Southern California and mostly do content around Disneyland, though they also do like Knots and Universal a little bit as well. Earlier this year, just a couple days before a new ride was set to open, this duo appeared on a Patreon-supported live stream to talk about their plans to be there for that opening. The only problem was Katie, one of the members of this duo, looked horribly ill on this live stream, like all the telltale symptoms of COVID. And she made no efforts to, you know, dispel the rumors or the allegations that she had COVID. And she didn't really mention that she had taken negative tests. And also during this live stream, Katie mentioned that Spencer sounded like he was starting to get sick. So that's really great to hear two days before you're about to go to the park to see the opening of this new ride. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, no. Did I say new ride? I, I misspoke. I meant the reopening of Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, so what happened was Pirates of the Caribbean went down for about two and a half, three months in the summer last year, just for some refurbishment, uh, maintenance work. Nothing materially changed in the ride at all. Uh, the only difference was they repaved the concrete outside. So this is a ride that's been open for 55 years, nothing changed, and uh, they had to be there for the reopening of this ride after it had been closed for three months. This is a ride they've probably been on 300 times, just to, you know, remind you. This is not a big deal, and yet they were gonna be there despite being deathly ill. Obviously, people weren't happy about this. There was actually a petition that started, and like all petitions do, it did nothing. But there was a lot of public outcry about this. People wanted them banned for life from the park, and I agree. I mean, yeah, let's do it. Eventually, Katie relented. She did not end up going, but oh, don't worry, Spencer did. So those, those COVID germs, they still made it there. No matter what you think about COVID, I don't care. I don't want to hear it, but that's still not great. <laughs> like, you can almost rationalize her thought process if it had been a new ride, like there's a new ride opening next month. And if it had been that, like you can almost like see the wheels turning like, oh, if I'm not there, like this is the only time that that ride will be a grand opening. But like still, no, you don't, if you're sick with COVID, you, you don't do that. And then also it came out last month that Spencer and Katie tried to ask other people in the YouTube influencer sphere to lie for them. <laughs> Basically say that she didn't have COVID, even though she did. And that was confirmed by Liz, who is the wife of Fresh Baked, one of the other YouTubers. So really just standout people. And it's that kind of behavior that's just deeply, deeply infuriating. Like if you have that privilege to go all the time as a content creator, all the time as a live streamer, you should be better. <laughs> like make better decisions, be kinder, be willing to wait for things because you've done them before. Give way to people who haven't, who, are, who may be experiencing it for the first time. It's not hard to make good decisions. You don't have to forego everything. You still have rights to be there and to experience the fun as much as anybody else. But as soon as you start taking it away from other people, that's when I start to hate you and when you deserve to be disrespected. So that's what this video is about. It just seems like it's easier to not be a horrible person, but I don't know, maybe it's not. I've never been a Disney influencer. Anyway, that's it. I just wanted to take some heat off of Disney adults because as you've seen here, there are much bigger problems in the Disney universe. And also because Tigger's my uncle. So, you know, just want to pardon myself. All right, bye.